What's going on guys? Welcome back to Fallen Tide TV. And today, I'm gonna be going over 10 extremely valuable tips for hunting South Louisiana. The way that I came up with this list was, I reached out to several duck hunters in the area, guys that I hunt with, people y'all seen on the channel, like Gary, Taylor, and Drew, and a couple other people who are local to the area, and I just asked them, what are some things that you think is extremely vital for hunting South Louisiana? And this is the list that we came up with. The way that I arranged this list, it's kind of a countdown from 10 to one, and I believe that the last three on this list are extremely important. Now, most of these tips are universal. No matter where you are in the country, you can use a lot of these tips in order to be successful. But if you're coming to hunt South Louisiana, you have to know these things. So if you're somebody who's never hunted South Louisiana before and you wanted to come give it a try, if you're somebody who's just now getting into duck hunting down here, uh, this is a very valuable tool for you. And even if you're a seasoned veteran and you've been hunting down here for years, there might be something on this list that you might be able to utilize this upcoming season. So I hope that this is a valuable video for you guys. With that being said, let's get into it. Number 10 on this list, I have watch the weather. One of the most important things to hunt in South Louisiana is make sure that you watch the weather before you go hunting. Uh, we have a lot of big water down here. We got the mighty Mississippi River at its widest point. So if you're crossing that river, you make sure that you know what the weather's doing. Also, like we all know, weather affects the way ducks behave. It affects the way they migrate. So make sure you're watching that weather, keeping an eye out because if you went out and you scouted the day before and you found birds and maybe it was an east wind and you have a hard north wind coming the next day, everything may change. So make sure you watch that weather. I think that one's pretty self-explanatory, but I had to throw that one in there anyway, just because in the state of Louisiana, especially on that coast, we have crazy weather changes. Sometimes it changes on a dime. So make sure that you watch that weather. Weather man ain't always right either. So always be prepared, you know, have yourself a rain jacket because anytime those Gulf showers can come up off the Gulf of Mexico and, uh, and you can get wet. So make sure you watch that weather. Number nine on this list I have, don't over hunt a spot. With the migration not being as good as it used to be down here due to a number of factors like you know loss of habitat due to these hurricanes and there's a bunch of issues that we might get into later on in another video but the main thing to understand when you're hunting down here is that you're dealing with a lot of stale birds at times a lot of birds that you know they've been there for a while They're, they've been there for weeks they haven't left and you're not getting that new push of birds so that makes hunting pretty difficult especially when you're hunting the same spots over and over again those birds are not dumb. They're not, they're not going to come back to the spots that they've been shot at over and over again. So make sure you're not over hunting your spot. When you hunt a spot and y'all have a really good hunt and you go back the next day and y'all only kill a couple of birds, you probably want to not hunt that spot again. You probably need to go find you another spot. Go ahead and go make a scout, find yourself some new birds, and go get set up in a different spot. Number eight on this list, clean your gun. Now this is one of those universal ones. I think everybody should keep their gun clean for a number of reasons. Obviously you want your gun to pattern the right way. Obviously you want your gun to function the right way. But down here in South Louisiana, we deal with a lot of brackish and salt water. And that is devastating to equipment, especially your gun. So make sure every time you take your gun out hunting, you're cleaning that gun whenever you get home. Number seven on this list, I have scout as a team. If you can possibly scout as a team, I highly recommend it. South Louisiana is a ton of water. We have a lot of public land down here and we have a ton of open water. Obviously, whenever you're scouting, the idea is to cover as much water as humanly possible. The more water you cover, the better. Also, if you have other friends in the area, make sure you give them a call. Ask them, hey, what did y'all see today? How many birds flew in on y'all? You know, did you, get a, did you get a new push of birds? You know, obviously don't ask your friends where they're hunting at, that's just rude. But just if you possibly can, and you have guys that you trust, reach out to them, ask them questions. It's all part of scouting. The more information that you can gather as a team, the better. Number six, take a lesson from every single hunt. Whether it was a good hunt or a bad hunt, make sure that you take a lesson from every single hunt. Those hunts that you go out and the limit came easy, uh, it came fast, you can take a lesson from that hunt as well. You can understand like what all did we do right today? One of the things that I find very helpful is keep a journal, you know, write in the notes on your phone, kind of what happened that day? What did we do well? What, if you had a terrible hunt, make sure you write that down too and say, look, what did we do wrong today? There may be a situation where all it was was we didn't have the right equipment to go out and kill these ducks. Note that. Make sure that next time you're in that situation, you have what you need in order to be successful that day. Take a lesson from every single hunt. I find that to be extremely important. 
Number five on this list, understanding the tide. Hunting waterfowl on the coast, the tide is an extremely major factor. Understanding how duck behavior is affected by the tide is extremely important as well because let's say that your tide level is at a medium level, I'd say an average tide, okay? As that tide starts to fall out, what's gonna happen is those ducks are gonna be looking for places to land. So sometimes just hunting in a pond that's gonna hold water when the other ones don't could be all you need to be successful. Also understand that if the tide is rising, you may end up in a situation where the ducks might have too many options and then it becomes very difficult. So I highly recommend keeping an eye on those tide charts. Also what's really important is understanding your access. Understanding that when a tide drops out, you might not have access to and from the place that you're hunting. So you gotta make sure that tide's gonna stay high enough the way you can drive out of there. I'm tired of seeing it. I see you guys on the Louisiana Duck Hunters page always posting, somebody come get me, I'm stuck on the sandbar. I'm tired of it. You know who you are. Number four, know when to use a duck call. Now I'm assuming most of you guys who are watching this video know the basics of blowing a duck call. You know how to sound ducky on a duck call, at the very least. Maybe I'll do another video in the future where I kind of go over the basics of calling in a duck. But for this, I really want to focus on when to use a duck call, like what type of days to use a duck call. Hunting at the very end of the Mississippi Flyway down here, those ducks have heard every single sound that a hunter could possibly make. And that makes it very difficult to fool them. A lot of times knowing what I'm hunting, what time of the year I'm hunting, or how I'm hunting depends heavily on how aggressive I use a duck call. Like if I'm hunting teal during teal season, I'm very aggressive on a duck call because teal are really responsive to a teal call very early in the season before they've heard a duck call. And teal aren't really the smartest birds anyway, and they very much respond to aggressive calling. But if I'm hunting loafing, gadwall, late in the morning, a lot of times those birds really don't wanna hear a duck call, especially not a mallard or hail call. You know, if you have a, a gadwall call, you might you know blow it every now and again, but don't overdo it. Maybe blow a widgeon whistle or something like that, just to mix it up a little bit. And to me, one of the easiest ways to figure out if today is a good calling day is in the morning when I see the first group of birds, I may blow the duck call at them. If they don't respond, well, hey, maybe they're just not wanting to respond to a duck call today. And the same goes for if I blow a duck call and they suck right in and come land in the decoys, obviously I'm gonna be using a call that day because it just so happened to be maybe, maybe new birds. A lot of times it's new birds that show up and then all of a sudden they're responding to duck calls. A lot of times those stale birds won't. So. It's really just understanding how to feel out the ducks and understand if they're gonna be responding to a duck call that day or not. Also understanding the difference of hunting over a feed or a loaf and how that affects the way that you use a duck call. Also, earlier in the season, I find it to be a little bit more useful to blow a duck call rather than later in the season, especially down here at the end of the flyway. So yeah, know when to use a duck call. Number three, and this is one of my favorite ones, be adaptable. We have all sorts of different terrain down here in South Louisiana. We have marshes, we have swamps, we have salt marshes. If it's at all possible for you, what's best is to have multiple different kinds of vessels. Now, if you're like me, and that's not financially possible, I recommend getting yourself an all-around rig. Now, understanding an all-around rig might really be based on where you plan on hunting down here. If you're hunting a lot of the WMAs or if you're hunting refuges and stuff like that, you need to consider that maybe a surface drive might not be the best option for you. That's why I have an outboard, because I wanna have access to every single wildlife management area and refuge in the state. And I did that by getting an outboard. But also, I have to understand that there's a lot of areas on those management areas that I might not be able to get to with my outboard because shallow water, sand, things like that, obviously you can't drive over that in an outboard. So what I did was I got a kayak to go with my outboard so that if I run into a situation where there's ducks and I can't get to them with my outboard, I don't mind paddling towards them. So yeah, when, you, when you're trying to make a decision of what kind of vessel you want to get, there's always that give and take. But I do recommend that if you can't financially own both an outboard and a surface drive or a long tail or something like that, I do recommend trying to get yourself something that's going to allow you to go pretty much anywhere. Now look, if you have a certain spot you wanna go, a certain management area you wanna to go to, and that allows a surface drive, and you're not really trying to go all over the place, and you don't mind being limited to the management areas you can hunt, but unlimited to where you can go on the few management areas you are able to go to, that also is an option. That's also about being adaptable. You're basically making the decision to be extremely effective in what you can do, rather than being able to cover 
more water or hunting more areas. So it's kind of a give and take there and you have to figure out what exactly you're gonna to wanna to do more. Also, being adaptable when you're actually hunting is extremely important as well. Think about the importance of being mobile when you're out there. Like if it's later in the season and I'm hunting loafing gadwall, I may only have 10 to 12 decoys, maybe 18 to 24 on open water or something like that. I do that so that if I have to pick up and move fast, I can do that. You probably don't want to be running 150, 200 decoys if you might have to make a move. Also, don't be afraid to get out and readjust the decoys if you have to. If the birds aren't really cooperating the right way, they're landed on the outside of your spread, you might want to open it up. You might want to move some things around and just see if it works. Be adaptable. Be open to getting out there and making some adjustments. I do it all the time. If birds aren't working right, I'm getting out there. I'm moving some things around. I'm trying to figure out everything that I can with the decoy spread to make those birds commit. Now, if the birds aren't even giving us a try and they're just landing 300, 400 yards over to our left, guess what? I'm picking up and I'm going over there. I'm not wasting my time in a spot where the birds aren't, aren't gonna be. But if I put out two, 300 decoys and it's just me and one other person, and we're, we, you know, it took us three hours to get set up that morning, I might not be able to move. So that's probably not the best idea. Now, I'm gonna tell y'all two stories, both of which I was with Gary, and one of them was a success story and one of them wasn't. And I'm gonna explain to you why. And if both of these came down to being adaptable. I'm gonna start with the story that wasn't a success story. So me and Gary were out scouting. I think it was like a Friday or something like that. And the wind, I believe it was coming out of the Southwest. And there was a bunch of canvas backs piled up right up against the bank. I mean, it was just covered in canvas backs. They had a couple of other species mixed in there. And we were like, man, this is gonna be an easy hunt. We're just gonna pull up down the bank with the surface drive, we're gonna park it on the bank. We're just gonna walk down the bank and we're gonna hunt straight off the bank. We'll put out a bunch of decoys. We're just gonna come with a ton of decoys and it's gonna work out. We were just so dead set that no matter what, this was gonna be a success. There were so many birds there. They gotta be back the next day. Well, next day came around. One of the things we didn't do was watch the weather. We had a major wind direction change. Conditions changed overnight. Next thing you know, the only duck that we have around us is widgeon and it was a lot of them, but they didn't want anything to do with coming by that bank. And we didn't have a P-Rog. We weren't set up with waders. We didn't have anything like that. I think, I think Gary had waders, I don't think I did. And so there's no option to just go stand out there in the water and hunt these widgeon way off the bank. We basically just had to say, we got our butts kicked that day, you know? We tried adjusting the decoys. We tried everything that we knew to do. And it just wasn't successful because those widgeon did not want to be right by that bank like the canvas backs did. And so we screwed up because we weren't adaptable. We didn't have the equipment with us to be adaptable. We packed only what we thought we were gonna need. And look, don't get me wrong, a ton of decoys is a lot of times all you need, but we had no other option in case things went, went south. And that's exactly what happened. And we, we didn't have any, any canvas bags. All the canvas bags left, they were in a different area. And uh, yeah, we screwed up because we weren't adaptable. Now, that situation happened and me and Gary made sure that that wasn't gonna happen again. And so we were hunting a completely different management area. I think it was the very next year after that. We shot a few teal that morning when we were set up in the blind. I think it was like, like I think we shot a gad wall. I think we shot three teal or something like that. We kept on seeing these birds that would pass next to us on either side and they were going into this marsh that was behind us. And so Gary was like, man, we need to go and we need to go paddle back there and see where those birds are going. That the marsh looks real good back there from the map. I said, all right, let's go. So keep in mind, we had already paddled like two miles to get to the spot that we were. And that spot was like another mile and a half that we had to paddle to, so it was a hike. But we went to paddling back there, and we get to this little, little what we call the Trinaz, it's like a little cut in the marsh, I guess, and it spills into some ponds. And as we're paddling through there, teal start jumping up in front of us, little small flocks of teal jumping up in front of us. So I'm like, man, Gary, load up that gun, you know, get up on the front of that and load up that gun. So he loads up his gun, and next thing you know, we're paddling in there, we're jumping up birds right in front of our p row and he shoots them. We made a swap, finished out our limit, we limited out by paddling around and shooting ducks. It was kind of a combination of things. We were trying to scout, but as well as we allowed ourselves to be adaptable. We hunted a really old school way. A lot of those old guys, that's how they hunted. They paddled around and shot ducks. And I just can't tell y'all enough how much being adaptable to the situation, allowing yourself to be mobile, to take chances, to try new things. Just, I mean, if you're really serious about shooting ducks, I mean, just do whatever it takes. Just having the right equipment with you can be the difference between having a good hunt and a bad hunt. It mainly goes back to just allowing yourself the opportunity to have options. 
All right, y'all. So the second most important thing when it comes to hunting ducks down here in South Louisiana is your hide. This is one of those universal things. No matter where you're duck hunting in the world, your hide is important. Down here in South Louisiana, we hunt in a lot of marsh where the grass is not very tall. I mean, you're talking like sometimes the marsh grass isn't but this tall. So the hide is very important down here. We don't have many spots where you can like tuck up next to a tree. We have some freshwater marshes that are, that are full of cut grass and yeah, it's easy to hide. But sometimes when you're hunting that really short salt marsh, it's important to have a really good hide. And what's really important too is not having a big blind that's gonna really stand out when you look across the horizon. So you don't want to catch the duck's attention. I mean, that's the main thing whenever you're duck hunting is when those ducks come in, they're looking at your decoys. They're not really necessarily looking for you. But if you have a blind that stands out like a sore thumb and you catch their eye, they're out. So the idea is really simply just to blend in. One of the main things that you need to consider is the sun. Which way is the sun gonna be coming up from? If at all possible, you want that sun to cast a shadow over you to where you kinda of hunt in the shadows. I find that to be very important. Also, you gotta think about the wind direction when you're going hunt that day. You gotta make sure that you're, you're at least hunting a crosswind if possible. It's very difficult to shoot birds when they're coming up from behind you trying to land because the birds are gonna land against the wind. So just consider that as well. And knowing that ducks land against the wind, a lot of times if you're hunting like a small pond, you can use that to your advantage. Let's just say I'm looking at it from a duck's perspective, okay? If you're set up right here and the wind is blowing directly over your back and you have a basic blind, the best you could possibly do, and you got three guys set up, which is really hard to hide in that short marsh, you're set up right here and the ducks are coming out against the wind and they're coming into your decoy spread, a lot of times having that blind right in line with their eyesight might not be a good idea. So a lot of times just hunting offset to the, to the side, hunting a, hunting a crosswind essentially, putting your decoys right here, might be all the difference in the world. And those birds might not never notice you and come in and land like this. And you're just sitting over on the side. So there's a lot of things to consider whenever you're coming up with a hide. That's the, and, and having that like that is actually part of your hide. Just being not where the ducks are looking. In other words, also consider the, the previous one, be adaptable. Like if you're hunting divers or if you're hunting teal, you might not necessarily need to have the biggest and most elaborate blind. So think about that when it comes to being adaptable. If I'm hunting divers, I might only bring a little bit of brush. That way I can hurry up, pack up and move that whole blind set up if I have to. Or if I'm hunting teal, I might not even make a blind. I might just get in the shadows. And that allows you to be able to move around and make adjustments and not have to worry about being stuck where your blind is. And the number one tip for hunting South Louisiana and pretty much anywhere in the country is be where the ducks wanna be. You can solve almost 100% of your duck hunting problems if you just set up where the ducks already wanna be. And once you figure out where the ducks wanna be, you can almost go back down this list to figure out the rest of what you need to do when setting up for that hunt. Now, some of these won't apply, but like, Think about it. If you figure out where the ducks want to be, the very next thing you should ask yourself is how do I hide? How do I hide here and be as close as I possibly can to those ducks? I mean, if the ducks are on wide open water, I mean, if you don't have like a really good pop-up blind or if you don't have a small vessel to get it hidden and get really close to those, where those ducks are, you might have to start looking for points on a bank and try to get as close as you possibly can. But the next, but the very next thing that you need to ask yourself once you figure out where the ducks are is how do I hide? The next thing is, you know, be adaptable. You gotta start thinking like, what if things change tomorrow? What if this is not exactly where the birds wanna be tomorrow? Maybe we might have to make a move. Think about those kind of things. Also like the tide, you know, look at the tide. Will the tide affect where I'm hunting at? These are questions that you gotta ask yourself once you find where those birds are. But that is the absolute most important thing for hunting ducks in South Louisiana and pretty much everywhere else in the world. It just be where those ducks want to be already. You probably won't even have to blow a duck call if you're just there where the ducks want to be. I really hope that these tips and tactics are extremely valuable to you guys this coming duck season. I really appreciate y'all for watching this video, and I'll see y'all next time on Fallen Tide TV.